Did you know that the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 is a Nightmare on Elm Street ripoff? No, not the actual Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, but instead the Italian one. Yeah, those silly Italians and their weird sequels. The rights to movies can change overseas, so sometimes you get very interesting choices for sequels. A lot of the times when movies were being made in Italy, the film producers were afraid that the movie wouldn't sell well, so they'd slap the name of a successful series on top of it and voila, you get an official, unofficial sequel. And it doesn't matter that the film has nothing to do with the previous entries in the series, and that's exactly the case with 1990's Night Killer, or Non e Prete Quelle Porte 3, which is Italian for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre series. It's strange, because Night Killer has more to do with Freddy Krueger than it does with Leatherface, but calling this an Elm Street ripoff is a big accusation. So, like we'll do all month, we'll dip our toes into the surface level similarities before we dive into the plot and really break down those differences. And of course, we'll end with a rating that will determine if Night Killer really is an Elm Street ripoff. Welcome to the Hellbound Horror Show. Night Killer has a seemingly burned face man stalking women and killing them. He's a wise cracking madman. He has a glove that he puts on with long finger knives on the end of each finger. He slices people with said finger knives and he can even stick the nail blades deep into his victims. That sounds exactly like Freddy Krueger, and there's no denying that. However, Night Killer differs greatly from A Nightmare on Elm Street when you break down its plot. We open on a dance recital. One of the dancers is late and she quickly changes in the dressing room, but oh no, here comes our Night Killer. The first thing you're gonna notice is the face of the killer. Now we all know this is a cheap horror film, and I don't mean to be rude, but I have a genuine question. Is this supposed to be the killer's actual face? Because clearly it's a mask. Now, I don't mean to nitpick and I'm not sure what to think. Am I supposed to extend my disbelief and accept that this is just a cheap movie and the filmmakers were doing the best they could? Or does it look like a mask because it's supposed to be a mask in the canon of this movie's universe? Well, spoiler alert, it is supposed to be a mask. This masked killer goes straight for the kill with his clawed hand and... <gasps> Holy crap, he just stuck his hand through her. Now, I don't care how sharp those knives are, that's insane. His whole fist went through her. Now, there is no supernatural element to this movie, so that killer must be jacked. He displays his muscles once again in front of the whole dance recital by killing the teacher. First by slicing her and then just punching a hole through her. She falls from the balcony and of course, no one sees the killer. Totally sus. The film follows Melanie Beck who is a loving mother. She drops off her kid with a family friend and then gets an obscene phone call from her ex-husband. We only see the back of him and the conversation escalates quickly. Clarissa has gone to the country with Annie. Listen, I don't have anything to say to you except don't call me anymore. Melanie. 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 This dialogue is very stinted and it feels awkward, but what else do you expect from the director of Troll 2? Yep, months before making the best worst movie of all time, director Claudio Fragasso made this gem. Oh my god! Well, Melanie gets another obscene phone call, but this time it's a bit more graphic and threatening. She calls the cops, but her efforts are in vain as the masked killer is already in her house. You would think that the killer would just punch a hole through her or something, but instead she somehow escapes. The family friend from earlier comes to her rescue and saves her life, but unfortunately he didn't get a very good view of the killer. Totally sus. Melanie did see the killer without a mask on, However, she now has amnesia and can't remember anything. She can't even remember her own daughter. She tries escaping mentally by fleeing in a car, but some drunk loser tries hitting on her. She pulls into a building and hides in the woman's bathroom. He follows her in, just to get held up at gunpoint. She tells him to strip, and then he strips down 
to his speedo. What am I watching? He discards his clothes in the toilet and she runs off. Of course, he chases after her. Hey, bud, what happened to your clothes? I got molested in a little boy's room. He chases her to a beach where she's taken a lot of pills to try to kill herself. He then makes her drink all the seawater to try to throw up all those drugs. What in the hell do you think you're doing? Committing suicide. Well, you gotta drink seawater if you're gonna throw up all that shit you've been taking. <laughs> what am I watching? He then kidnaps her and when she eventually comes to, she tries to kill herself with the gun. The guy just eats fried chicken in her face and makes some weird remarks. Why you shoot yourself, try to, I'm gonna eat. Nothing does it to me like fried chicken. What the heck am I even watching? We get weird Stockholm Syndrome scenes between the drunk and Melanie, interlaced with scenes of the killer killing off different ladies. There are some major twists and turns, and the whole thing feels like an in-depth story told from the drunkest person on Earth. Some of it is completely coherent, while other bits don't necessarily line up. It reminds me of that one kid trying to explain his dream. He stumbles the whole way through, but he's so proud of his answer. You do so, you, you do, you could, you, you want, you want him to do you so much you could do anything? It makes sense from the director of Troll 2. I won't spoil the ending, but wow, this film is bonkers. It's all over the place. It tries to be this really intense thriller, but again, it's not always cohesive. It doesn't make much sense, but that's the joy of it. There are many things to like about this movie. There's plenty of TNA, gore, and WTF moments. The film looks good. The acting is so bad, it is good. Dialogue doesn't make much sense, but it's quirky, it's hokey, it, it works. The film tries to be good. It feels like the writer-director Claudio Fragesco really tried to make a tense thriller, but the final product doesn't live up to its own hype. It's endearing in that way, and it's entertaining, just like an Ed Wood film. There's obviously a lot that people could end up hating about it. Let's be honest here, Night Killer is an objectively bad movie, and for all the reasons that I love it, people could end up hating it for it, and I would completely understand. It's all about how you view these kind of so bad it's good movies. If you can find enjoyment in bad movies, then this flick might be worth your time. If you're someone who likes only good films, then maybe Night Killer isn't the movie for you. That's okay. Everyone has opinions and someone's favorite movie could be hated by millions and someone's least favorite movie could be loved by millions. Beauty really is in the eye of the beholder and I love Night Killer. Now, it's not one that I go back to often, but I do have fond memories of its absurdity. But the real question is, does it rip off the Nightmare on Elm Street series? Outside of the obvious Freddy Krueger-inspired influences, Night Killer has little to do with the burnt dream demon. I'd say that Night Killer is about 30% in Elm Street ripoff and 70% its own thing. Yeah, it stole Krueger's look, but the story is completely original. And that's all I have for tonight. So, as always, sweet dreams, everyone. You've got something on your face. Let me get it for you. Now, I love It's So Bad It's Good movies. There are so many good ones, but what's your favorite? Some of mine are Troll 2, The Room, Fateful Findings, but I'd love to know what you like in the comments below. Good night.